So again, it's showing you the planning process. So the bottom part is the podium, and then you have maybe a layer of filter paper on top of the, your gel is sitting, okay? Gel was already uh, denatured and neutralized, and then your filter uh, membrane, maybe natural cells or nylon membrane, and then stack of maybe filters and the paper towel. Uh, so you pr apply a weight so it can stay together. And then now buffer will travel through this, you know, the wig or whatever, and then the travel through maybe a layer of uh, filter and then your gel to the membrane and through the membrane and then it will go all the way to these stack of paper towels but you know DNA will be carried from the gel to the membrane but it's going to stop there because the membrane has very small pores it's not going to go through the DNA molecule cannot go through the membrane so it's going to bind a stick there okay uh, the capillary reaction, you know, it can be done that way, or it can be done the other way around. So by placing your buffer and then maybe touching wigs there, and then uh, in this case, it will travel from the top layer to the bottom because that's where your buffer will travel, right? So your gel is there in this case, and membrane is there, and then uh, the paper towel is there. So follow from top to bottom process doesn't matter whatever the way is better I mean you can set it up either way and then you can use something called electrophoretic platter so if you have two metal plates in between negative and positive you can place your gel and the filter paper next to it so in this case this is a negative side that's a positive side so your DNA negatively charged will travel from the gel to the membrane electroporetically. This may take a uh, less time, maybe within an hour you can finish that if you have this uh, instrument. Uh, the transfer can be done using an air pull, vacuum pull, so you can f force DNA to travel using a vacuum pull so if you have a device like that. I mean there are a whole bunch of different ways of doing that. Once uh, your DNA is successfully transferred from the gel to the membrane, and then you want to make sure that DNA will stay on the membrane surface tightly. Okay, so that's a fixation. Okay, so if you are using natural cells membrane, you can remove water because the binding between the DNA and the membrane is hydrophobic interaction. Just remove water by baking, maybe. Okay. If you are using a nylon membrane, you have to do a strong UV light exposure. We call it cross-linking. There's a covalent binding happening between your DNA and nylon membrane when you do that using the UV light energy. Okay, You can use either way. So that's the fixation process. And then once that's done, your membrane is ready for hybridization. Okay, But before you do the hybridization, you need to add one more step. One more step is something called pre-hybridization. So hybridization is a process where you're going to add your probe there directly, right? But before you do that, okay, you need to do one more treatment on the membrane. That is the pre-hybridization process. Think about it. Your DNA bound to the membrane okay, through hydrophobic interaction or cross-linking. That's a kind of random reaction, right? So your membrane still has a lot of those hydrophobic sites where it can bind with any types of DNA, including your probe. Okay, so your probe can stick to the membrane cell, okay, randomly, okay. So if that happens, that's a problem, okay. So before that happens, you're gonna block out all those random binding sites on your membranes, okay, by using some random DNA, okay. So that's what pre-hybridization is, okay. So you're gonna add about uh, 0.2 mL of pre-hybridization solution which contains the random DNA fragment. Mostly it's a, like genomic DNA, uh, E. coli or something, some DNA that's not closely related with the DNA of uh, the material you are studying. Okay? So random DNA is just added to the surface of the membrane. So it's going to coat up all those random binding sites on your membrane. That's what this pre-hybridization is. Once that's done, then yes, your membrane is ready for your hybridization. Okay, so you can add your probe at that time. So radio labeled hybridization probe can be added. So it's about 10 to 20 mic nanogram per mil that concentration. So your probe is of course denatured to single strand DNA, and then you're gonna let it hybridize about overnight, six to eight hours. Okay, so we're talking about that step here. Okay. And then once that hybridization is successful, 
you get the membrane out and wash your membrane a few times so non-specifically binding your probe will be washed away only the specific ones will be remaining okay so that's done so see washing and detection so um, you will use some washing solution that will knock up non-specific probe binding on the you know maybe membrane itself or on other DNA uh, fragments that do not have good match okay so when you do that you can use different washing solution depends on how much of random binding you have you know the stringency comes with the salt concentration and the temperature condition okay so after washing now you can detect the specific binding by exposing your membrane to X-ray film so if you detect these kind of bands on your extra film when, you, when it's developed those are the location of your probe sitting on the specific target Okay, so that's that the end of the southern blood hybridization okay so again the southern blood hybridization is kind of outdated technology these days so instead of southern blooding we use uh, Bese. but before I talk about Bese, I'm gonna apply an animation of your southern blood hybridization so if you click on uh, maybe this maybe you can copy and paste um, or you can click on that animation if you have the PowerPoint slide but let's let's try to copy and paste that website address and click and you will be able to see that animation just click on the say okay allow uh, Adobe flash then you will be able to play this animation so you have DNA molecules isolated from different organisms right you want to see how similar they are is used to verify the presence or absence of a specific in the DNA. I'm going to mute this, but you can play on your own. So you're trying to look for this fragment of DNA that with a specific uh, sequence match. Okay. So then you're going to chop them up into small fragments, and then you're going to what, sort them out based on the sizes using electrophoresis. Okay, agarose electrophoresis. They are sorted out based on the sizes, right? Once that's done, then what do you do? You do the blotting to transfer these DNA fragments from the gel to a membrane. There you go, that's the blotting process being taking place. Um, and once the blotting is done, now it is ready. So before you add the probe, you need to pre-hybridize first to block up non-specific binding. Once that's done, you're going to add your probe and see if your probe will hybridize. Yes, yeah, seems like it's hybridizing there and there. Okay, so then you can detect them by exposing your membrane to the X-ray film. So there you go, there's X-ray film. That's detecting the radiation coming from your probe. Okay, that's the end of the process. So you can play this on your own. Uh, it's going to explain ent the entire process. Okay. And then the other website uh, I want to show you is this Gene So more modernized southern blood hybridization process is called Gene Chibese. Okay, southern blood hybridization, you are hybridizing one probe at a time, right? So that's not really efficient. That's a very about half century old technology. But you know, the newer method will allow you to hybridize maybe hundreds of different probe at a time. So let's take a look at this Gene Chip essay. You want to copy and paste the website address uh, and go there. So let's see. Oops. Is there and I'm gonna go so there you go gene chip essay this is the animation it's gonna play so let's see what it does so yeah this is a chip okay uh, this is a developer of gene chip which has hundreds of probe embedded on the small space take a look at it little on the surface of the little chip you have a bunch of probes with the specific sequences okay, that I added. So, see, that's how you add the probes there continuously. So, each probe will have a unique sequence there. Okay, that's how you make your gene chip, right? It's before it is used for the hybridization. You can create that gene chip by adding nucleotides, specific nucleotide at a time. So that's creating probes with specific sequences. Okay, so now you have the gene chip. Okay. And that gene chip is being hybridized with maybe the genetic DNA fragments. If that one of the fragments binding on there is it's hybridizing. Okay. 
you can detect the hybrid digestion okay if one of the two either probe or the target DNA is labeled with something like fluoropore that will give you a signal okay so once you can make those gene chips you can use them to uh, screen for hybrid digestion that is where this micro DNA microarray will be uh, coming in but uh, this is a combination between you know DNA to DNA hybridization and DNA to uh, RNA hybridization. We'll talk about that and when you talk about the northern blood hybridization. So we'll continue our discussion. So okay, we'll stop here for the lecture level now.